we are ready to go. I'm going to take a little talking bubble off of my mini host friend and uh, we can get started. So thank you everyone who is tuning in this week for our part two of tracings or tracing for Arts Arts Explorers. Uh, if you missed last week, we uh, archive all of our video is all available online. Um, and then when the feed is all finished, because as you can tell right now, we don't have any live captions happening. Um, I go back and I make sure that all of the videos that we post are captioned. Um, we also, just in case uh, you don't know, this is our sixth live uh, workshop that we are hosting on Facebook Live. But every week at the beginning of a new theme, we post a video to YouTube that kind of introduces the theme. So next week, you'll see a post where we have posted uh, a new video up on YouTube. So you get a preview of what the next two workshops are going to be. Um, and, then, uh, and then it recycles all over again uh, every two weeks. That's, that's what we've been doing so far. So um, yeah, week one, we did framing. Week two, we did shadows. And now, uh, sorry, week, so theme one, we did uh, framing and then week two, we did shadows and now we're coming to the end of uh, theme three with tracing. So thank you everyone who has been tuning in um, the last month and a half. It's really a delight to uh, be here every Saturday at 11 with you and your families to explore a new way of thinking um, and making. So before I get started, like I always like to do, whether we are live in gallery or we are live on Facebook, is to explore or to talk about our three rules of explorers. And um, the first one is, I'll put it over here so everyone can see it, is respect. And so uh, we practice respect. And I, I always say practice, and I want to go into that a little deeper this week. Mistakes are okay. Uh, we talk about, you know, that there aren't any mistakes when you're trying things out, but that's Mistakes are a real thing. You can't get rid of them. Sometimes we we try and, and we don't we don't succeed. So if one week you're not great at respecting yourself or each other or our tools, then we're practicing. We can put that behind us and then the following week we can learn from what we did and then we can do better by acknowledging that we didn't do great before. So if you were grumpy last week and you watched the video and you really couldn't make along and you're back again this week, well done, you, you, you did good. This is a way of your practicing respect for yourself and trying again. So we practice respect by checking in with our bodies, about thinking about how we can be more present um, every time, do a little bit better. We practice respect by um, uh, checking in with each other. So maybe last week your brother wasn't doing so well, or maybe you had a friend over and you were practicing social distance and you were really frustrated um, and they, they're not feeling so great this week or they're, they're not as confident and you can check in with each other. Um, and then our tools, uh, we respect our tools by cleaning them if they get dirty, putting them away when we're finished. And if somebody else is waiting for our tools, maybe somebody's waiting for the scissors, we can use our words or our signs to communicate and ask, you know, what do you need the scissors for? I only need this for another minute. Um, or just giving it to them so they can do something quickly and they can give it back to you and you can continue. And that's a way we practice respect with our tools. And then the land, I am, um, I am hosting this workshop on unceded Coast Salish territory, where I acknowledge the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish people I am an uninvited guest on these lands and I'm trying to do the best as I can while I host these workshops. So I would like to acknowledge um, them, their ancestors and the land while we host this workshop. And that's, that's just a few ways that we can practice respect. The second one is nothing is for keeps. So that eliminates a lot of the pressure. Today we are just trying things. There is no finished product. So take things from your recycling bin. And when we're all finished, maybe if you have permission, rip it up, crumple it up, throw it back into the recycling bin if it can be recycled. Today we are just trying things out and then when we're all finished, it's the experience or the pictures in our brain that stay behind 
And then we've got those tools so that when we are exploring in the future, when we're trying to do a finished thing, we already have, we're already confident that those things that we tried, we know they're going to work or we know how they're going to work. And then that last one is no expectations here. I'll put that up on top. Is that all ideas are good. So even if it doesn't turn out the way that you hope, that's okay. In fact, get rid of the hope, get rid of the expectations, get rid of the picture in your brain of how something's going to turn out and always ask what will happen if I, and then try to surprise yourself. If you already know the answer, then that's already a tool you have. That's already a skill you have for the future. But when you practice surprise in art making, you're always learning. You're always finding out something new. And I encourage you to do that in these, uh, in these workshops. So those are the three rules or guidelines that we like to follow when we are practicing at Art Starts Explorers. And I encourage you to keep doing that uh, whenever you explore at home. So uh, just like last week, I have got our, or I've got my um, light board out or my, uh, my light box. And what I would like you to do is while you're watching this is to imagine that this is a window for me. And so the sun is behind. And if you are in so-called Vancouver today, it is cloudy outside and probably all over the lower mainland. Um, so it's not super bright, but that doesn't mean that you can't still try tracing by putting things up on a window because the light, even from the, the sun that's covered by the clouds that are covered by the rain, there's still light that is coming through those clouds and there's still light in the window. So if you were to put a piece of paper up on your window, even with it cloudy, you'd still be able to see something through that paper. So I just want you to practice your imagination and when you're following along with me, this becomes my wall and this is my window as if the sun was behind. So if I turn this on, bright, so there's the sun behind. And as I'm learning at the same time as everybody who's watching right now, um, we've only, I've only done this six, six times for Art Start, so I'm going to learn something new every week. And what I learned last week was when I turn off all the lights so that you can see clearly what I'm doing on my tracing board, I can't tell what color or what's going on all around me. So this week I've got um, some light that's going to help me figure out where all my tools are. So I'm learning at the same time as you. I don't have a lot prepped. We're just checking out what can happen when we test out uh, tracing together. And if you come up with something cool, if you figure something out that I'm or that you're doing that's completely different, please let us know. Either post in the comments, send us a picture. We would love to see what you're practicing at home anytime. If you're doing this later in the week, please let us know. We'd love, we'd love to find out more. So just one last acknowledgement before I get started that uh, if you joined us a little bit later, we have Leah Horlick, our uh, project ma or our, sorry, our program manager, um, on the chat right now, and she is available to answer any questions or comments that you have as we go through today's workshop. So feel free to be posting things there, and she's available to answer any of those questions. Okay, so last week when we were exploring tracing, we checked out um, how to quickly design some characters with different hairstyles, different clothing, by just having um, a template that we were able to then try different things very quickly by moving the piece of paper on one uh, template to another. We checked out secret messages and codes. We did some pattern making and we uh, examined how we could tell a story using um, a light box or using a window and the light through the paper. So that video is still available, but this week what we're going to try is we're going to uh, kind of build on some of those ideas. We're going to look at composition. And composition is something that if you go into the world of design, if, uh, when, you, when you grow up, when you uh, decide to go and um, work in different, different design fields as a graphic designer, as, a, um, as an interior designer, as an architect, um, ha knowing how things are placed within a scene. And this kind of brings back our framing things as well, right? So whether or not this is a picture that we're trying to design to, whether this is a computer screen that we're trying to design to, whether this is a, um, a tablet, and here I've got a, I've got a template over here today. I'm gonna pull this over. Whether it's a tablet you're designing for, right? This is, this is really another kind or another way of saying frame. And so any of those designers, any of those jobs, 
they're always trying to make a composition. They're trying to put things together so that each thing kind of is related to each other where it's set out on a scene or a plane. Uh, if you're an architecture, or sorry, if you're an architect, um, maybe you're planning a park and if you're looking from above, maybe you can't move around the trees. So knowing where the trees are in relation to the building or the fountain or whatever you're building in that space, you're, you're actually building a composition, but in real life. And so what we're gonna be looking at uh, right now is, um, so today while you're practicing, if you're practicing along, you are all going to practice some graphic design, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to start by uh, we have been asked by somebody to make a t-shirt and so maybe maybe your kindergarten is going to go out uh, on a field trip and you all want to have matching t-shirts or maybe you have a super cool club uh, maybe a vid video game club or uh, maybe you want to make a family t-shirt so everybody at, at, in your family or uh, your neighborhood all have matching um, designs on their shirts and so what i did was and you can find this template this this particular picture i posted it on the art starts facebook group so if you want to be working from one of these you can go ahead and print that out but really it's very easy to make a t-shirt template and so i'm going to turn off the overhead light a little bit so that Oh, whoops, what am I doing? Oh, light. Okay, turn that back on and then unplug that. There we go. See, I'm making mistakes as I go along as well. That's a little bit less light and then here I'm going to turn off this one as well. Turn that down a little. Oh, over here. There we go. Okay, so now you can really see that light box. So drawing a t-shirt template if you don't want to work from this printed template that's okay and maybe your shirt your shirt looks completely different and so an easy way to draw a shirt is you think about the neck right and so maybe the neck is a circle maybe the neck is uh, a triangle so whatever the neck is you draw that shape and then you can go right from the shoulders right to the sleeve so one line one line one line then a place for your body to go in and then oh, it's a little longer and that's okay because that's just our template and so you can see if putting those together right so it had the two arms and it had the neck here and that's just another way of drawing a t-shirt so however you're going to draw your base template that's fine you can take one that already exists from the internet um, or you could draw your own and then what we're going to do is we're going to go okay what we want is to draw something that is and i'm going to say that my club is the happy face club and so we have a really easy drawing we just decided that we wanted to have a happy face and so i'm going to start by drawing a bunch of quick circles in different sizes and then uh, i think that the happy face club is probably going to use yellow oh do i have a sharpened yellow here i do i have lots of pencil crayons here and you could use anything you could use crayons you could use markers or you don't even have to use color at this point you could just be drawing um, in pencil or marker whatever design you want especially if you're designing for um, a group right so what we're doing right now is we're just trying something small but if you go into uh, if you start working as a graphic designer, as somebody who makes this for different people, you have to listen to uh, the opinions of a lot of different people. And sometimes that means you have to go back and forth um, and listen and practice respect for everybody's opinion. And that can take a really long time. But for me, I'm lucky. I just know that my club wants a happy face so I can just draw this. And for you, you're just drawing an imaginary shirt uh, or even if it's a, a real shirt in the future, you can just draw something really quick that makes you happy. So I drew, there you go, there's my three happy faces. And then what I'm gonna do is, so this is where I'm talking about composition. So if this is all, the t-shirt is all of a sudden our frame, so rather than it being a rectangle, like in our viewfinder, the t-shirt outline, that's now our frame. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that, those pictures, and we're gonna place them on top of where the shirt is and we're going to compose it. So maybe we don't want the happy face there. Maybe we want it up on the shoulder 
or maybe we want it down at the bottom. Or maybe that's too small of a picture. And so now we can bring this one up and go, oh yeah, I like that a lot better because look at how close that is to the armholes over there. Um, it takes up a lot of the chest. That's gonna look really, really cool. Um, but just because I drew that other one, I can check here and go, oh, no, that's probably too big. I don't want the, or maybe you do, but for me, maybe I don't want the happy face to be that big. The other cool thing about using um, tracing and light boxes to learn and to test composition is that you're not stuck. If you had a real t-shirt, you uh, if you went over the edge, you wouldn't really be able to tell. But here, I can I can just bring that design and overlap it over top of the shirt and see what it would look like if I wanted to have the, uh, the design just be on the side of the shirt. And sometimes you see that with clothing, right? That there's a design that's off to the side and if you, ha you have to lift your arm to actually see the pattern. And so we're able to quickly move and put that around. Oh look, <laughs> you can make the happy face with the head, right? We're playing as we go along. I didn't even look to see that. Oh, what does it look like with a small head? Really silly. Okay, so I think I decided that for my shirt, I really like this, um, this medium circle. And so what I can do now is I can switch the, uh, the order and I can put this underneath my template. And remember, this is my window, so you've now switched it. And here I'm going to, I'm going to do what you would have to do. I'm gonna pull out some tape because your window would be straight up and gravity would be pulling down the piece of paper. And so for you to work, you probably are gonna to wanna to tape it up on the wall, or sorry, up on the window. And if this is your family's window and you're, um, and you're trying this on your own, always ask for permission, right? Because if uh, you don't wanna leave any marks behind. And so I'm just using painter's tape, but if you use white tape, or sorry, the clear tape on the window, Sometimes that can be really hard to pull off afterwards. So I really like to use um, masking tape or painter's tape just because it's easy to see and then you can pull it up. You also don't want to leave it on the window. So today it's okay because it's not actually that hot outside. Um, but on a really hot day, sometimes the masking tape can leave behind a residue or a mark or like glue, sticky stuff on the window. And so as soon as you're finished, you want to take that off right away and then if you need to clean it up, you can, um, you can either clean it up with some water or you can ask um, an adult to help you and then they may be able to use some um, window cleaner. Okay, so we're pretending this is a window. I stuck the first one on. I'm gonna bring this over and I'm gonna position the design that I liked, right? We're being graphic designers right there. And if this is distracting, right, all these extra ones, don't forget, and if you've been in my workshops before, you know how much I love to rip paper you can just quickly, because remember, this is just a prototype. This is just a draft. We're just trying things out. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you want to get the scissors out, you absolutely can get the scissors out. But practicing ripping paper, that was really, really fast, right? If I had to get my scissors out and actually cut that out slowly, it takes a long time. And we don't need to be this precise when we're just testing things out. That's all I, that's all I have patience for. So I'm going to put that down right there. I've got some rip marks. That's okay because all we care about is the drawing that we made. So I've still got a little bit of room to put the tape on. Ooh, look, I don't even need as much tape anymore. Then, and then same thing here, right? I, I printed out a bunch of the same template multiple times on the printer. And if you're good at using computers, you can easily figure out how to make multiple copies. But there, I just ripped it out and now we've got we've got our template really fast and so we can focus on just this. And same thing, so before I wasn't really sure, now I can test, oh, do I want it really close to the neck? Do I want it really, or do I want the armpits to be where it's gonna be? Um, and when you start to have those questions, you can, actually, you can actually test that in multiple ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go, okay, well, I'm not sure if I want it below the, the um, armpit or not. And so I'm going to draw it maybe in the middle here, real, real fast, and I'm going to trace my happy face real fast. And there we go. So this one's a really simple drawing, so it was pretty fast for me to do. But now I can see it there um, at the armpit line. But I want to test to see what it would look like if it was really high up. So same thing. 
put this back here. And this time, it's going to come right up near the neck. Same thing. Very easy for me to trace this. There we go. Pull this away. All right, so now I have one that shows me the happy face really high up, one that's in the middle, and because I've got this extra template, I'm going to also just check because maybe, maybe when I'm going to show this later to my grandma and ask what she thinks, um, she's going to want, she, uh, she's going to want to see all the options, even the ones that we decided uh, we didn't, we didn't like here. Tape that down in the window, draw that down. Also different bodies, right? So when you start designing these kind of clothes, um, maybe you have a guardian who is pregnant and they've got, and so the shirt is going to be a little bit larger for their belly. Or maybe your teacher or your neighbor has a bigger body size or maybe a really small body size. And so understanding how shirts and how materials fit different bodies differently can affect how designs change. And this is, this is if you ever wanted to become a fashion designer, um, this is also something that you would be thinking about when you're thinking about different fabrics. And so being able to draw these things really fast and being able to test out those different things and with different templates uh, for, different, for different body types, this, this is an important thing to be able to try. Okay, so there we go. There, I put one down here so that the happy face was at the stomach and I drew those extra lines just so that we could see if it was a bigger shirt. Because this is, this is pretty small, right? This is a pretty skinny shirt there and not, not everybody looks like this. And we want to be able to make, we want to be able to see what it looks like with multiple bodies. That's another thing that you could be doing, right? Your template could be different. So we know that this is the design that we like. This is the happy face. But we want to have different... Um, different shirt designs, this the front for different body types. So we could make um, a really small t-shirt. We could make a shirt that allows for somebody who's got um, a bigger torso. We could make it for a t or a tank top because maybe the tank top is what some people would prefer to wear. And then here, I'm going to do a second tank top that allows for a bigger body type. Right, because little bodies are good. We want to be able to make sure that everybody can be wearing this cool design that you had and trying all of these things out. Um, it's the same with shoes, actually. Uh, so I have really, really big feet. And sometimes when shoe designers are designing their shoes, they're designing their shoes for these little tiny feet, right? So maybe that looks really good on a really small foot. But when you stretch it out for somebody who has really big feet, maybe there's a whole bunch of problems now. Maybe this doesn't actually fit a bigger foot or maybe there isn't as much support here. And so trying things out for different body types is really important when you're trying out these different things. Um, so, so same thing, I just created really quickly those different kinds of uh, templates and move those to the side for a second. And now I can go, oh, okay, well, I'm probably going to have to draw a smaller version of that design when we make, um, whether we're drawing or painting or we're screen printing, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can make your drawing transfer over, or even when you send it off to a company so that they can print your shirts, just knowing how that design is going to work in different spaces and being able to say, yes, I want one picture or one design for all the things, um, it's important for you to test those things. Okay, and then on the bigger one, yep, over by the armpits, or down further, and then on the t-shirt, or the tank top, it takes up a lot of the tank top that I drew here, but it actually looks really good on the bigger body size tank top. So you can really quickly test to see which one you like, and then you can also take these prototypes, right, these samples, to your family, to your friend, to your kindergarten class, and say, okay, I drew these three, which one do we want? And you could ask for votes, you could ask for feedback, you could uh, put it up on the wall so people could think about it for a while, because remember, we're practicing uh, respect, and we know that some days we wake up and we feel really good, and some days we wake up and we don't feel good at all. I also drew this back template, or I've also got this back template, 
And so you could also go, okay, well, it's all really cool that it's on the front, but I want it to be on the back. And same thing, you can just go, oh, and here's something else. Okay, so we decided that we liked it, uh, which one did we like? I think we liked this one, where the armpit, I'm gonna pick up that pencil. The armpit was basically the middle of where the design was. So what I can now do is I can take that first design and take the back piece and go, I want this to be on the, in the same place, but on the back. And I can draw my guideline there. Draw my, I could draw my happy face if I want. Or maybe I, I don't actually want a happy face on the back. Maybe what I want is the front to be happy and I want the back to be sad because when people see me walking away, I'm sad because I'm leaving them, right? And until we see each other again. And so that was really fast for me to be able to design the front and the back, oh, this one right here, the front and the back of a t-shirt really fast. And here, I actually really like that one, so I'm going to transfer it right here. Sad face. There you go. And there we go. Right? That was really fast for us to be able to design the front and the back of a shirt just by drawing it quickly here and then trying it in different places. So that's just one way that we can be practicing composition. Um, but basically, it's the placement or where we put something in relation to a frame or to, um, to an object. So this one is on the t-shirt. But if we were going to be designing a picture, right, for here, if this was the page, right, we've got our handy view viewfinder. If this is the size of the piece of paper that we're going to be drawing our final piece on, we could quickly go, okay, well, where do I want this happy face? Or maybe I want, here, I'm going to take that other one here and I'm going to turn it into a sun. There we go. Real fast. Now my drawing is a sun. And so what I can do is I can take my viewfinder and I can go, where does it look the best for me to have the sun? And when we practice learning like this, when we try things out before we even draw anything on our final picture, it allows us to figure out where we're going to start our picture. I don't know if you've ever started sketching something, if starting drawing something, you're like, oh, this is going to look really good. I'm going to draw an eye right here, and I'm going to draw my, my nose right here, and I'm going to draw my mouth, and, and then all of a sudden you come over here and you're like, oh, no, I, I don't really have room for the eye because I didn't plan, and where am I going to put the, their ear? is isn't going to really fit now, and where's their hair? And, and you weren't really prepared because you just started sketching. But for this one right here, we can actually go, oh, okay. Well, when I start drawing my son, I want to make sure that I have about a finger away from the corner or away from the top. Or maybe I go, no, I actually want it to be an infinity space over here. I want it to come right to the edge of the page. So I'm going to start by drawing my son right here in the corner. And then I can draw everything else in relation to that because I've already made my plan, my, my picture, my composition and design using my viewfinder. See, I told you in week one that the viewfinder is a really cool tool to have, and it's so simple. It's just a piece of cardboard with a, card, uh, with a rectangle cut out of it. So um, having one of these around is such a good tool to have no matter what you do. Okay, so that was composition. The next thing that I want to try out is something called deep looking. And for that, I think I heard my printer finally finish. And now, because you're on this mic this time, you can actually hear me walk away. There we go. Okay, so I took a really big, well, my partner helped me take a really big picture boom, of my face. And so you can do this too. You can take a picture of your face, or you could take a picture that you find of the internet and then print it out. And this is a really great way of learning uh, pieces or learning different ways of drawing because when we're tracing, we have to figure out the lines that are important. It's, it's really, really hard to take a picture that has, that really quickly takes in all the details of all the pieces of hair, but it would take so long for us to have to draw every single one of those hairs. And there are artists that do that. You can go online and you can see um, artists that do things called photorealism, where it's almost as if they're drawing exactly 
uh, a, a, a picture of it. But for us drawing, we don't actually need all the details for it to look like an eye or an eyebrow or lips. But by doing it this way, what we can do is we can start making tests of what we do need and what we don't need by deeply looking at what we want to trace. So there are two ways I'm going to do this, and I'm going to focus on eyes. And I'm going to take two pieces of paper, and I'm going to put them over both of my eyes. Actually, I'm going to put one over my eye and then put the other one here. And so the first way of doing some deep looking, and deep looking just basically means you slow down and you try and find all the things you possibly can. And then even when you think you found every single thing you can think of to, to look at, then maybe ask somebody else if they notice something that you didn't even notice. And then you get really good at noticing detail. And this is important for everybody, whether you're going to be a scientist, whether you're going to be um, good at cleaning up in the house, or whether or not you're just, you're going to pay attention to safety when you're out on the street. Being able to notice details is a really important skill, and so we can practice learning details by doing this deep looking. Okay, so I'm going to start by deep looking at my eye, and I'm going to draw right on the picture. We're not going to trace just yet. Um, we are kind of tracing, right, because the image is still coming up through the page and we can see it, but you could turn off your light box, and you could do this just directly here before you turn on, or sorry, before you bring it up onto your window, because um, you, you might be able to see it a little bit better. Um, if, here, I'm going to just check to see if you can see it with this light right now. Here, turn on the light a little bit brighter. There we go. Okay, so without the window right now, you could do this just on a, um, on a table before we start. You've taken a picture of your face or you've taken a picture of whatever you want to trace from the internet, and you're going to look really close. And so for me, I noticed that I have this line right here for the eyelid. Right? So above my eye, I've got this line, and I'm going to make it darker so it's really clear to see. So that's where my eye, eyelid line was. And then I have the iris, which is the circle on the inside of your eye. You just trace the outside of that to get a feel of what that looks like. And then I'm looking really close, and because my camera is really good, I can actually see the window in the reflection of my eye. Those little rectangles there, I'm going to draw those out. Those are the windows in my apartment that I can see. And you probably don't have those, but maybe you do. This is, this is what we're noticing when we're deep looking. And then inside I've got an even darker part of my eye, a darker circle. And I'm going to color that in and make that really clear. And then at the bottom here, okay, this is something that's really interesting. Um, and this, this is something that when you're starting to learn how to draw, sometimes you, um, you might make an eye just by going a uh, circle or an almond or um, an upturned shape or a half circle. That's maybe the shape of the eye. And then you basically just put a dot in the inside of it, and there's an eye. And maybe you put some eyelashes. And remember, all bodies have eyelashes. Not just, not just uh, girls or women, but all people, all humans have eyelashes. So when you add eyelashes, that's, that's, just, that's just a normal eye, right? But there we go, that's basically an eye. And most people can figure out that that's an eye just right by itself. But what we're missing are things like that eyelid line, and when you start looking really closely at what a real eye is, there's this little bar down at the bottom, this little lip, this little shelf between where your eyeball sits. And you can do this in the mirror too, right? You don't have to um, take a picture if you don't have access to a printer or you don't have access to a camera. You could just go up to a mirror and you could do this um, in the washroom at school, or you could do it in a mirror in the mall. Anytime you see a mirror, if you wanted to go up really close and look at your face and see if you can notice something new every single time, I bet you you will notice something. Because our bodies are also always changing. Maybe you'll notice a new freckle, or maybe a new hair, or maybe a suntan line, or maybe a different color to your hair, right? You're going to be noticing new things all the time. 
And so, okay, so we've got this line here, and that's, you know, that's the same as this line. But check it out, there's this other line right here. And you'll notice this when you go into the bathroom and you look in the mirror, right? And this line usually is white, lighter pink, right? And so that gives a bit more depth. It makes it look a little bit less cartoony or iconic and makes it look more realistic. So just by having one extra line, actually two lines, right? This line up here and this one, this already is a more um, real looking eye than this one. Okay, so cool. We've discovered the second line here. And then there's this little pocket here that if you, uh, and of course, we don't want to be touching our eyes right now. I mean, you don't ever want to be touching your face. You really want to make sure you always have clean hands if you have to touch your face. And so when you're checking in the mirror, um, try to keep your hands away from your face while you're doing this. Um, but right now, it's especially important that we don't touch our, touch our face with our hands. But if you ever accidentally touch this or you get something in your eye that maybe you're going to be rubbing this section of your eye, and this is the part where the, the tear kind of collects over here and over here in the corner. And so there's this like little circle here. And you know what? I'm just drawing my eye. Your eye could look completely different, right? My sh the shape of my eye is more like this one right here. But as we're looking, right, this, this comes up equally on both sides. Mine kind of groups over here, right? So this is the direction that my eye goes, like this. And your eye probably doesn't do exactly that. And your guardian's eyes, and your parent's eyes, and your teacher's eyes, and your best friend's eyes, all of those other people, their eyes are going to look slightly different. And so when you're done deep looking at your face, you could also have a friend or just another human sit across from you and you could spend 30 seconds deep looking at each other's faces. And it could be it could be hard to do. A lot of people really struggle just sitting for 30 seconds and looking at another face. But this is a good way of figuring out and learning details and checking out the differences between your face and another face. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to this eye here. We've got this cool line, this cool line, this cool line. We've got that little circle over in the corner. And then I've got the top part of my eye here. And then check out all these eyelashes, right? I'm just gonna draw those in just to make them a little darker. And then one last thing before I turn the light box back on again is in this picture, so this is where I drew that line in here. I'm gonna make this a little bit darker so that you can see with a Sharpie. So this was the top part the line and then you can see this kind of gray part over here this is a, this is a shadow and when we when we're drawing really simple like this there's no shadows here but basically what that is is that this is where the eyelid comes over the eyeball and creates this shadow here right here and all of a sudden just by adding a couple of dark lines there I've already got some more depth to this eye over here, right? Okay, there's our eye at the bottom, there's the lip that comes out, and there's, check that out. That already looks more like a real eye than this one did, right? So this shadow here is really very interesting, and I'm just gonna give a few quick lines right there to, to make that a little darker. Okay, so I have basically just colored it in, and it doesn't look that different. If I was gonna take this away, check it out. Right? It looks a little bit darker, as if maybe I was putting on some makeup. If I had put some eyeliner on, or maybe some eyeshadow, maybe it looks a little bit darker. But basically, that's my eye. So, if I turn this back on again, you should be able to see those things that I have defined here. And that makes it even more easy, when I'm going to come over and trace it, to be able to see the things that I want to pay attention to. And here, I'm going to turn down the light again so that you can really see um, what I did. Especially with grayscale, it can be difficult to see all the details when you're just printing. Okay, there we go. So you can see my light box now. And check it out, right? When I hold that down, you can really see the eye there. I'm going to hold up another piece of paper on this other side over here, though. And it's kind of harder to see all those details on that side, right? 
And you can't really see that dark part in the center on this one. It kind of all is flattened out. But this one I can really see. So not only did we spend time deep looking and noticing all those things that we might not have noticed if we had just quickly gone, oh yeah, so this is the outside of my eye, and this is the circle part, and this is the bottom part, and I can kind of see that eyelid there. Right? So that really fast here, I'll bring that over there, right? That was a pretty simple eye, and that looks more like those icon eyes that I had before. It doesn't really look like a human eye. It does. But you can also look at it and check it out. So my eyelid over here, it, it comes down on this side. So before on this side, and this is something you know, that, that was really interesting because I went to art school. We had to do this. We had to look really deeply so that we could draw eyes. The first time I noticed that eyes are completely different shapes was a, was a big deal, right? Your left eye and your right eye, they don't look the same. And that's something else I want you to check out when you look in the mirror or you take a picture. Check out all the ways that even on your face, this side of your face looks different from this side of your face. We always like to say, yeah, a face is basically the same if we were to draw a line through the center of it. But tracing also lets you tell how different it is because I can just fold this page over, try and line it up a little bit. Uh, that's more like lined up. Okay, I don't know if you can really see, it's, it's kind of dark here, but I've got this kind of weird shaky image because one of my eyes stretches out here and the other eye is here. And you can try this at home, especially on a bright day um, when you're looking through uh, the window, you're really going to notice this. And you could also quickly, here, so that, that was one way I wanted to show you if you were going to take a picture of it, but if we were to draw really fast, those two eyes, here, I'm just going to, because I know all the places that I can be looking for now when I'm trying to draw my own face, because we already did that, that deep looking, and every time, every time you practice deep looking, I guarantee you're going to find something different, and if you don't, it means you're not looking deep enough or spending enough time, and sometimes if it's hard to concentrate, I've had a lot of things that I'm doing that day, um, I've, I've been really busy at work or at school or somebody said something to me and I can't stop thinking about it, that it can be hard to deep look because you're really focused on other things. And so just closing your eyes for a second and taking a really deep breath and then coming back to it and actually just closing your eyes and then opening them up again to see uh, what you first notice is a really cool way of doing deep looking as well. Because sometimes we can get so focused on what we see that we miss things because we keep going back to things that are familiar that we that we know to look for but when you close your eyes for a second sometimes when you open your eyes you're surprised because your eyes go somewhere different here the window the windows in my um in my eyes are in a slightly different place so they couldn't be exactly the same so many things you can notice when you're checking these things out and oh yeah I could probably spend hours just going through here and finding different things about my face. And I've been drawing my face for a really long time because, because I am an artist. And every time I draw it, I'm going to notice something a little different. Okay, so I'm going to take away that picture underneath. And just before, even before I fold it, we can check out all the differences. So this one is a little farther forward. And maybe you feel like you want to, like you want to, fix up those lines because they don't look right when you pull it away and that's okay as well. Or you can bring the picture back again and go, okay, yeah, that's where that line is supposed to be. Oh, I forgot to shadow this part over here, so I'm going to add that in. And that's okay because right, the tracing picture is always there for you to go back as a reference um, and look again. So I'm going to pull this over here. And remember how I said they're not the same? So we can tell that right now. This, the, my bottom lid is kind of skinnier and squashier than this side. I noticed that I had more eyelashes on the bottom, even though I know that they're there. This is, I just noticed them more on this side. Kind of the, the reflections in here, even though they were the same windows in my apartment, they're kind of different sizes. And as I was showing you before, I kind of, I have more of a slope in my eye over here than I have over here. It kind of comes down versus this one. 
And then the last way that we can tell that they're really different is like I was showing you before is the folding. So we don't have a whole bunch of that grayscale now to be in the way. All right, check it out. Look at that. So you can see that this eye actually droops lower than the other eye. And that my eyelid over here, same thing. They're not at the same height. The, eye, the irises are pretty close together. So that's one thing. If I was drawing my face again, I would know that I could put those about the same size. But they're not the same. And as you go through and you deep look at your face, you can really tell. And some people, some people it's very different, right? Some people's eyes are not even level here and they can't fold it like this because their eye is more like this. And some people are born differently where one eye is at a different angle or if they get sick and maybe one eye is a little lower or maybe they've got a part of the skin that's different. Different faces are so interesting to look at. It can be really boring to actually look at really perfect faces. And so finding all the ways that we're different and all the, the different marks on our face can be a really interesting thing. And it can be an easy way for us to be able to show one picture versus another and, and be able to distinguish or to be able to uh, compare how things are different, right? And so if we were going to simplify this to show sometimes what we'll do is we'll go an adult is really tall and then maybe a teenager is medium sized and then somebody in a wheelchair is uh, their head is probably the same height as this teenager and then a kid is really small. The only way that we're really distinguishing that people are different here is by their height. But if we start checking out all these differences in the face, maybe one person has a mole here. Or maybe one, as I said before, one person's eye, if we were to draw a face, is a little lower than the other. And then we can quickly be able to show, rather than just doing heights, how people are different. Maybe the hair is a different thing, or maybe um, they always have a really cool t-shirt, or whatever it is. So learning all of these details are a way to add back into your pictures um, how to differentiate or how to show how people are different in these drawings. All right, so that was a whole bunch of talking just by deep looking, but deep looking is so interesting. I could just spend an hour just deep looking at one picture and finding new things all the time, and I would love to see um, how you're deep looking at things at home. Okay, so we're gonna move this to the side as well. And now what we're going to do is we're going to practice a little bit of animation. Animation is, um, well, one way of saying it is like cartoons. So when you watch um, cartoons, the drawings that are moving, what they're doing is, is they're, um, now they do mostly do it with computers. But once upon a time, if you were going to watch um, some older animated shows, you, what, what they're doing, and I talked about this a little bit last week, was they take one drawing, and then they put a piece of paper over top of it. And usually they use this material called onion skin paper, um, or just a tracing paper or a vellum. And they put that over, and then they quick trace almost all the pieces except for the thing that they want to move. So if somebody was smiling, um, you would just draw maybe a, a slight smile, then a bigger smile, and then a really big smile in your third picture. Um, and then you would layer them on top of each other. And that's what I'm gonna, we're gonna explore next in the last part of this workshop. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna show you how to do a flip book. And however you're gonna draw this at home, you don't actually have to draw a person or a scene. You could just draw a line and you could just make a line move. In fact, you know what? I'm going to just draw a line because you at home, if you wanna draw a person running or um, a scene changing or a bird flying or whatever you can, but I'm gonna show you how we can do a flip book really simply with just a line. Um, and so I'm going to draw a line here on one page. And all I did was I took a piece of, uh, a big piece of paper and I cut it into a bunch of smaller pieces using my scissors but uh, you could rip up a bunch of paper or you could take a bunch of recycling. Um, you do want them to kind of be a similar size or at least have one edge, and I'll show you why, but it's just so that you can run your finger along it and see, um, and it's just so that you can have that, that motion here. You can see how I'm going page, 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 page. If you have a whole bunch of different sizes here, uh, it could be harder, 
but this is explore, so don't listen to me. Try things out. Maybe you can make it work with a whole bunch of ripped sides or a bunch of different sizes. Um, what happens if you have, you have different color paper? What happens if you have slightly thicker paper versus lighter paper? Right? Don't ever take what I'm saying to be the only way of doing things. There are so many ways to explore, and I know that you're going to be able to find different and interesting ways to try things at home just by asking what happens if I... Okay, but we're going to continue because I'm the one who's hosting this workshop and you're watching my screen right now. Um, but remember, whatever you do at home, and even if it's different, it's you're doing a good job. You're doing good. Okay. I actually think I drew this a little big, and that's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you why um, in a second why that's probably too big, and and we can we can test it out. So what I want to do is I want that line um, to move across the page. I actually basically want it just to move off the page. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that piece of paper. I'm gonna put it on top of that previous drawing, that line there, and I'm gonna draw it again. But I'm gonna move the page slightly so that it looks so that uh, the movement of the line is about where it's placed on the page, right? The composition. So it's going to go a little bit further over to the right. So I'm going to quick draw that line again. And then I'm going to take another piece of paper and I'm going to move it the same amount as I moved that first page. Again and again and again. If you think about those cartoons that you watch, where there's so many movements, think about how many times people who were doing this, um, and they call it cell um, cell tracing, uh, had to do this to make just your character talk, or move, or dance. So many pieces of paper, so many just small movements, so they can get these paper, so they could uh, have the uh, the character move. Okay, a few more, real fast. And this is always fun to do in pencil, but you could do it in pen or crayon or whatever you want. I find that pencil is the easiest, and if you um, if you make a mark that you didn't intend to, which is okay, um, you can erase it really easily. But whatever whatever style you do is just fine. Okay, two more. And one more. All right. So it was harder and harder to trace as I went along here because the paper layered up is harder to see something underneath. Um, what you could do is you could just take some of these and put them to the side, and now it's a little bit easier to see. Take some of these aside, it's a little easier to see. You just um, you probably want to keep them in a, a consistent order. So when you finish one, put it over to the side. Again, though, if you want to mix it up and see what happens when you change the order, check it out. What happens? Okay. So this is the reason why I think that it was a little too big, is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over here, and you're going to watch the image here, the, the lines that I drew. Ooh, there goes the line. Right? And so do you see it kind of moving as I go along here? Right, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Really, really, really easy. But it's easier when you have smaller, uh, smaller movements. And because this page is so big, it actually takes it. It's longer for me to be able to flip this over here, and a little bit harder for you to see from above. But if uh, if I was to make a smaller line, which I'm going to do right now, and look, all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over to the other side. Right? There's all this room on these pages, and I'm just going to use this section over here. And so I want to start with a single piece so that I can see it really easily. And I'm going to put the line right here, and it's only going to be this big. And this time, rather than the line just shifting off the page, I'm going to get it to move kind of like a worm. So this page, where I'm going to trace it over top, now what's going to happen is I'm going to start it a little further over to this side of the page, but I'm going to curve the line a little bit as if the, um, the spine, as if the spine of the worm was going whoop, 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 whoop. And that's basically the motion that I want the worm to do. Okay, so I'm going to take that, I'm going to do one more page because I think I'll be able to see it pretty clearly here. And always moving it over just a little bit to the side. 
Okay, and now what I told you before, I'm going to stack them over here so that they're always in the same order, but then I can easily, more easily, see the line underneath that I want. Okay, the next one. I want it to be even further over because the curve started there before, then this was the next line, and now I want the curve to be over here so that it looks like it's moving. Okay, take this bottom piece off, move it over here, move this paper, and then again, I want to move it a little bit further over so you can kind of see the line there at the bottom. I want to start it closer to the right side of the page so that it's got that motion going. Take it from the bottom, put it on top. Here, squirmy squirm. Take it from the bottom, put it on top. Okay, so now I'm going to end up off the side of the page. And because I don't want to draw on the window or I don't want to draw on my light board here, I'm just going to take another piece of paper and put it there just so it doesn't get messy. Oh, and what? So the last time I drew one, and you can always check by looking back on the page. Oh, I drew a curve. Okay, so I want a line next. So starting a little bit further over. There you go. Right? I don't have to worry because I drew onto this part here. And I don't have to worry about drawing on the on the window. Um, I'm gonna take the one from the bottom, put another one on top. There we go. And then draw a curve, because I drew a straight line the last one. Oh, almost off the page, little worm. Take the one on the bottom, put it on top. And I want a straight line. sharpen those lines again. Okay, cool. And then one more because it's almost finished. Okay, so now I did all of these in order, but as you might have noticed the last time, when I have this, the, the, the top one here, it means that the first thing that you're going to see is it's starting over there. And so as I flip, what do you notice? Here, I'm going to turn on the light just so you can see this a little easier because when I pull it up from the light box, it's probably not very clear. Turn the light on. There we go. Okay. So we have these pieces of paper here now. So if I start it here, the last one that I drew, this is the starting point of the flip book. And so as I go like this, oh, oh there you go. Right, he's, the, the, I guess the line is a he, but it, the line, is moving in this direction. What would I need to do? to make the line move in the other direction. And the more pages you add, I find the easier it is to create the flip book, but try different things. Try it with different sizes of paper. Try it with different colors of marker. Try giving it to somebody who has smaller hands or bigger hands, right? What, when you just change a few of those things, what's different? Okay, but I wanted it to go off the page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually reverse the order that I drew these in. Right? I'm going to stack them in the opposite order. And now all of a sudden the starting, the starting picture is the line over here on the page and it's going to be moving off the page, right? And here, I'm going to fold this over a little bit to see if that's any easier. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if this is easier. But usually flipbooks have um, a staple over here, so I'm going to see if folding the page makes it any easier for me to flip. Okay, so it's going to start there, and <laughs> there it goes, off the side of the page. There we go. And if I had a bit more time, I probably could just keep going, and maybe I will. Maybe I'll um, do a couple more lines here, and then I can post it up um, on the Art Starts Facebook a little bit later so that you can see the full animation. All right, so we are coming up on 12 right now, so that was an hour of exploring. You don't have to uh, finish up at home. You could keep doing these. Um, if you've got all your art making tools out, if you were just following along to watch and now you want to make things and you're inspired, um, I really encourage you to spend, um, if you're in the local area, this rainy day inside trying different things. Uh, we explored composition today where we were actually going to uh, build things based on a frame or within a t-shirt um, that this is the frame of our design. 
you could also do it if you wanted to build a website or build a video game or build a, um, a mobile application, depending on where you are in your art making. Um, this is just another kind of frame when you're designing something for the computer. But if you're drawing um, a picture or if you want to take a photograph, you're composing by putting things together. We did some deep looking where we looked at our faces really closely, either with a mirror or through a picture um, that we printed out to find out all the ways that uh, lines exist on our page or sorry, on our faces, on our marks, how one side of our face is different from another, and if we feel good looking at somebody else's face and then seeing all the ways that their face is, uh, their face is different. So we did some deep looking, and then finally, we use tracing the light underneath to be able to see the picture underneath to draw just a small amount of movement or a difference so that we could start animating a picture. So those are just a few ways of exploring tracing. I want to thank you for being here um, as we explore tracing today. I want to thank Leah Horlick, our, our program manager, for being um, on the chat channel and answering any of your questions. I'm gonna leave the live feed on for about five more minutes so that you can ask any of the questions, but I'm gonna start cleaning up here. Um, and remember, please tell your friends to join us every Saturday at 11 o'clock. We would love to have you. All of the videos will be archived, so you can uh, link to them so they can check it out later. You can re-watch it later in the week if you wanna get inspired or you have some time to be doing some um, art making and exploring later on. And you can always go back and check out our previous weeks of framing of uh, shadows and of tracing. And if you stuck around this long to listen, I can give you a sneak peek and next week we are going to be exploring erasers. So thank you again so much. Have a lovely week and I look forward to seeing you next Saturday at 11 o'clock.